Good morning, Northeast Ohio. Nine weeks from tomorrow, it all gets underway. And Team Trump is already involved in the planning process. Representatives of the Donald came to Cleveland on Friday to meet with the committee on arrangements to go over the plans that have already been made. How important was it to come in right away after Indiana and, and, and catch up on things? Well, we, I'm sure Jeff is happy that uh, he's got somebody to deal Absolutely. with now. And, uh, and we, know, we want to make sure that all of the details are organized so that we can meld very comfortably with the RNC and have a very can good time. Physically, the stage plans are sort of set because of the cast schedule. They're kind of locked into things. But as for programming, Monday there's a lot of convention type business that has to take place. But after that, the Trump production value can kick in. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, though, are fairly flexible. And we will work with the, uh, the Trump campaign, obviously, on programming for those three days and nights. Well, King also told me that he believes Gateway will be the safest place in America the week of the convention. But as our Megan Hickey found, threats often go beyond the physical. The hacker group Anonymous and the city of Cleveland already have a history. After shutting down the city's website to protest the shooting death of 12-year-old Tamir Rice. The victim was only 12 years old and only had possession of a toy airsoft gun. Just two years later and on the eve of a historic convention. To me to hack into this would just take a couple of seconds. Cybersecurity yeah. expert Dave Kennedy tells me that the threat goes far beyond the internet. Now groups like Anonymous can hack power grids air conditioners and even the airways are expected again when the RNC comes to Cleveland. This is a declaration of total war. Operation Trump engaged. And now they have their sights set on Donald Trump. We need you to shut down his websites. Research and expose what he doesn't want the public to know. And Kennedy told me Cleveland's RNC is the perfect stage for their attack. Think about what bigger stage that you have as a hacker than going into and, and you know, tearing apart the Republican National Convention from a, from a cyber capabilities. He says there are plenty of ways to get to Trump. Even his supporters and sponsors could provide a pathway for hackers with just the click of a mouse. And just by you clicking that link, I can actually take full control of your entire computer. Cybersecurity expert Matt Neely told me local businesses, even those with no connection to the convention, could have their networks or financial data threatened. He worries that a variety of hackers could use the convention as a smoke screen. Some could be just um, taking the websites offline, defacing the websites uh, to get out political messages or disrupt business. And it's not just Cleveland area businesses that need to be on the lookout. It's residents, too. Kennedy says large crowds like the ones expected this summer often draw ATM skimmers. Cover your hand off when you're actually doing your PIN number. Because a lot of times skimmers will play small, tiny micro cameras in the area to capture your PIN as you're entering the PIN into the actual device. But both experts tell me it's not too late for residents and businesses to figure out a defense plan. The sky is not falling. You know, there are there are good things that, that folks are doing to try to protect against these types of hacks. They say put together a critical response plan in case of an emergency and make sure your critical data is backed up. So a little bit of uh, preparation can can go a long way. Especially when it comes to knowing what to do. I could hack into, uh, depending on. If a suspicious email comes your way. Operation Trump engaged. We are anonymous. Whether it's cybersecurity or physical security, the efforts to keep Cleveland safe this summer are extensive. But what they didn't want to happen in Cleveland was what happened in Tampa in 2012, and that was a massive security zone which turned downtown into a ghost town. They don't want that to happen here because the people of Cleveland were a big part of the city landing the convention, and they want you to be a part of it. That Cleveland really wanted the Republican National Convention was known to the RNC immediately in March of 2014 when they braved the D.C. snowstorm to make their presentation. As the day wore on, fewer and fewer people were able to get in, but the city of Cleveland's people came in and said, we're here, you know, we just remember that we were here when other people weren't. That said something about Cleveland and its people, something reinforced when the site selection committee came to Cleveland a few months later. The thing that I think has impressed our committee the most is the people. The hunger and the enthusiasm to make this happen. Uh, that is something that you, you can't replace. That's why those behind the convention want to make sure those people get to share in it. What we want to do, John, is make it very easy and accessible for people who want to come downtown, be around downtown, to see and feel and experience what the atmosphere is like around a convention to do that. Gilbert said in the coming weeks a number of large events will be announced, some private, some for the public. But it goes beyond that to the little things to make downtown more exciting for both guests and locals. Some of those may be in the form of, of 
uh, very specific events. Others may be just our way of putting entertainment around different streets to make sure that things are even more lively than, uh, than they otherwise would be. And while a lot of downtown restaurants are booked for private events during the week of the convention, a lot more of them are going to be open for regular business. The RNC Host Committee will be working to get that message out in the coming weeks. With Democracy 2016, I'm John Kasich. Enjoy your Sunday.